All right, so the first thing that we're about to do is I have this uh, nice little yellow fan tuner real quick. Uh, I've been letting it sit out for about a good 15 minutes. I'm just going to go ahead and hit this with something real, real simple, just some salt and pepper, and that's it. We're going to go ahead and do a, a nice little sear, set it to the side, and then we'll go ahead and get everything set up with the pizza. So boom. Go ahead and hit both sides with some salt and pepper. And you can do your own thing, but I'm just kind of, you know, trying to keep it simple so I can just do a nice little sear real quick. Uh, I'll go ahead and do a medium with the sear on the tuna. So I got my little skillet heating up real quick. Let's see where we at. So I want this to be as hot as possible. I think we're good to go, man. So now I got my tuna already seared here. It's kind of just chilling on the plate here, just resting. We'll go ahead and flake that down in a minute. Uh, the next thing I'm about to do here is, so this is kind of the twist that I'm doing on this. I'm actually about to go ahead and do a simple little Alfredo sauce. I'm gonna use a little bit of tarragon in my Alfredo sauce, and I'll save the rest of this tarragon for the actual pizza topping itself. So I'll just go ahead and chop that down. Uh, this is a nice little piece of uh, Parmesan uh, that I have. A little Parmesan block, so I'll break that down for my sauce. Uh, another thing that's needed for my sauce is just one clove of garlic, a little bit of butter, and I'll also use a little bit of olive oil. So the whole key or the whole little uh, secret to this whole uh, recipe today is actually going to be the uh, lemon. So I have an organic lemon right here. Cool. So what we'll do is go ahead and break everything down that we need for this Alfredo sauce. Right now I have a uh, little small skillet. Um, on low and then anytime that you're doing an alfredo sauce you definitely want that you know it's on a slow and low no need to rush anything at all um, and that's it man so I'm about to go ahead and break this garlic down real quick doesn't have to be perfect Got the garlic broken down here. Now, this is a neat, uh, nifty little tool right here. This is from Chefin. Uh, this is actually like a little herb or, um, you know, just a, a, a little peeler uh, from, you know, leaf to stem. And you see right here, you got the different little gauges that you can use, uh, you know, depending on the actual stem itself. So I'll probably go down to the smallest one here. Boom, takes it right off, man. It's just saves a whole bunch of time man as opposed to have you know trying to chop a whole bunch of them off and not really maximizing what you're getting off the herb and just the time of trying to you know peel everything off one by one so you can catch this on amazon like i said this is by chefing it's a nice little kitchen tool here man i think i got a weak little uh stem here so i might have to just take the loss on that one which is cool but you can see how small that stem was, so it, you know that wasn't that bad. Cool. We're gonna do that for the last one. Actually, no, we're good. That's a strong stem. I can go ahead and run that through here. I can just fill it. Boom. So, got that broken down. And all I'm gonna do on this, with this tarragon, I'm just gonna do a nice little. Actually, you know what I'm gonna really do is actually save these stems. And I'll save the stems, like, you know, just for when I'm actually getting the uh, sauce together, and then I'll go ahead and take them out. Because uh, it's, you know, still a lot of, you know, strong oils in the stems as well, too. But with this, I'm just going to do a nice little chop, break it down. You don't got to go too, too fine here, because like I said, I'm still going to be using a lot of this to uh, spread on the actual pizza as well, too. And I'll just put a little dab of it in my, in my sauce, so... So we are good to go with that. Let's 
get that separated. Cool. Now, I'm using a sweet little cheese grater that I got from Ikea. You can do your thing. You can use a bag of uh, Parmesan cheese if you want. That's cool. I like the uh, blocks of it and everything because it lasts a little bit longer and you can, you know, kind of get that fresh grated cheese game going on at your discretion. You know, you can just have it right on the whim. So boom, that's cool. That's to be sufficient for our uh, Alfredo sauce here. I might not even use all of that because I don't really want it to be too rich here. And you know, this Parmesan cheese is kind of rich in the flavor and everything, but that's it. So we're good to go. Now, um, we're about to go ahead and jump right over to this uh, Alfredo sauce and get that jumping. So let's do here. it. I have the uh, eye on low. I'm gonna hit that with a little bit of olive oil here. Go ahead and hit this bad boy with some butter. And again, I really don't need that much sauce. I just need enough sauce to actually, you know, cover my pizza dough here. So go ahead and let that kind of do its thing on slow and low. No need to rush it. So now, what I'm doing right now is I'm adding my, um, and you can you can do your, your, your garlic however you want to. You can do it like little almond slices, little slithers or whatever. I think the thinner or the smaller or the better. But the only reason I'm actually doing this right now uh, before everything gets hot is because I absolutely do not want my, um, uh, I don't want my butter to burn here. I don't want my garlic to, to brown. I don't want any of, that, any, any of that to happen. So it's just a slow and low. And as soon as this butter melts down, I will go ahead and add my heavy whipping cream here and just let it do its thing, man. And looking at just the, the amount that I have in here right now, I think I'm, I know for a fact I'm definitely not gonna be doing a lot of Parmesan cheese. So we're gonna go ahead and throw these tarragon sticks up in here to kind of let it, you know, just perfume the uh, oil and the uh, and the butter. So what I'm using right now is just uh, you can whatever your choice is. I'm just using a, a nice little organic heavy whipping cream. So right when my oil and my butter starts to bubble a little bit, that's just when I like to go ahead and add my milk. And I'm also going with a heavy whipping cream. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it down a little bit. Boom. Like I said, I don't really need a lot of sauce. I'm not really trying to go heavy in on that. And uh, I'll save my heavy whipping cream for another day. All right, so now what I'm about to do is just turn my heat up just a little bit. I'm taking it to about medium. I'm gonna go to a big spoon here. And just get like a nice little stir going on here. So I'm actually using an unsalted butter here. I'm not about to do anything heavy. I'm just gonna do a little bit of, you know, just a small little dab of uh, salt right here. So you can see the amount that I got going on right here. Boom. And go and drop that up in there. And you can add more salt, than, you know, if you want. Me, personally, I just think you got a lot of different things going on here. You got the cheese, uh, the provolone that we're gonna be adding soon. We have the Parmesan. So, you know, two different salty uh, things. I did look, do a little bit of salt on the tuna when I seared that as well too. So really not necessary for a whole bunch of uh, salt. So what I'm about to do is kind of step it up here just a little bit, because ultimately what we're trying to do it is, it is a slow and low, but you just want to kind of get a bubble going on with this. And I'm not going to add the typical amount of Parmesan cheese into this like I would if I was making like, you know, pasta. Um, but I'm gonna do just a little bit of cheese just to, you know, kind of thicken it up just a little bit. So right when this bubbles up, like you can kind of see a bubble forming right here, cool. But right when I start getting a, you know, a nice amount of bubbles in here, we'll go ahead and take these tarragon sticks out and finish this Alfredo sauce. <laughs> So now, so now we got the crust ready. I just drizzled it with a little bit of olive oil real quick. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do a par bake on this for a few minutes until it, you know, kind of uh, just 
gets a little bit, uh, you know, hardened on the outside, still soft and everything, still gonna be doughy in the middle, but just to kind of uh, have a solid surface so we can go ahead and add our toppings. So now we are ready to go, ready to roll. Uh, we're ready to go ahead and assemble this pizza. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is real quick, I told you I was gonna reserve some of this uh, tarragon for the actual sauce. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of that tarragon right at the end so it, you know, kind of still keep its uh, flavor. You know, I didn't want it to get too lost in the, you know, the actual uh, Alfredo sauce in itself. Uh, and I'm not about to, you know, trip out about the actual sauce factor itself if I have a little bit left. Remember, you can always save this, freeze it. You know, you can save this for some pasta or you know, anything else later on. Uh, and the same thing with the tuna, too. If I have some leftover tuna, I might go ahead and make a little uh, tuna pasta tomorrow. I might do a little video on that as well, too. Just kind of show you how to maximize some of your leftovers. And I think that is perfect uh, for what I want. So we're good on the sauce. So this tuna has been resting for a little bit here. And all I'm about to do is just kind of, uh, I'm just going to kind of flake this up just a little bit. You can see it's still pink in the middle, a little bit uh, rare, which is cool because we're still going to be cooking this as well too. Now, you don't have to trip and use this whole thing. Like I said, I could, you know, really save the rest of this and use this for a, um, like a little tuna pasta tomorrow. So I'm about to see here. I, I really don't think I'm going to use that. Now, if you want it real, like, you know, heavy with the tuna, game going on you can do that that's cool go ahead and flake that out a little bit and i'm going to try to get as much rare uh parts of that tuna out as i can because like i said that's going to, the rest of that's going to cook on the actual pizza i think that's going to be pretty good boom so now we can go ahead and assemble this pizza get that together and i'm again i'm just keeping this as rustic as possible <laughs> Here we go. It's been about probably about twenty minutes. Oh yeah, it's good and toasty. So I did say that these lemons were going to be uh, important here in this whole little process. And I totally forgot right before I actually shredded that tuna down, I was just going to go ahead and squeeze a little bit of lemon on it. Um, the reason I was going to do it before is because I didn't want that acidity to kind of fight with that cheese and, you know, make the cheese curdle or anything. So at this point, what I'm doing right now while my cheese is actually uh, where the pizza is resting, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze a little bit of lemon uh, just on one little small portion. Uh, I, th I don't think it's going to hurt, but as far as this actual recipe and what you're doing, you want to go ahead and once you're, you know, your, your tuna is rested down, after it's rested, go ahead and hit it with a little bit of lemon, man. It's going to change it to another level, like uh, how lemon will actually, you know, step up a, a you know, a tuna salad or, or whatever it may be. Uh, especially like when I do a tuna melt, I absolutely add the lemon in my, you know, tuna, the actual mix before I actually do the melt. So, cool. Thank you.